Welcome back to our third part of this exploratory data analysis topic. What we're going to talk about here is what are we actually doing in this process? So EDA is kind of an analytic engine. We're going to be taking a look at the outputs of the process and based on the inputs, the raw data, the current process knowledge we have, rough ideas about how things are working and so forth. And what we'd like to be able to do is get in theories about what we should do further investigation, where we should drill into the process to find out how the mechanisms of the process are actually performing. So the objective is to discover statistically significant distinctions between these rational subgroups of data within the problem. And so as we're looking at this, we start with a subjective view and data that may actually be more highly subjective, and we want to turn it into something more concrete. So the sequential exploration of the rational subgroups in the process, each of the steps, the physical things we can see as we're investigating how the process flows, is going to tell us what to do. Now, there are four particular statistical methods that we use for doing this. The first is the individual's chart that allows us to see patterns in the historical data. The second is capability analysis that allows us to estimate the theoretical best and the actual achieved capability of the process to deliver quality or performance relative to a customer specification. The Pareto chart, which groups together all of the reasons that we see for recurrences of failures to meet the expectation. And the final is the analysis of variance, which describes the variation within the process steps or between, uh, within the rational subgroups and between the rational subgroups or the process steps. So what I'm going to do now is just explain a little bit about each of those four tools so that you can understand conceptually what we're going to do with them. As we come uh, into the measure phase and we get into Minitab, we'll show you actually how to run those analyses, but we have a few things that we have to do before we get to that point. So first, these four tools are what's going to provide us with this objective understanding to crystallize the formal problem statement. And that's the important thing that we realize that each of them in the sequence is adding some contribution to the knowledge that we have. Now, we would like to take, first of all, this historical view of the process, the time series or the historical view. And we're going to analyze that with an individual's control chart. So the eye chart is a timeline, and what we see is it plots the average performance for the raw data, but it also shows the actual individual observations of the data. And it does some pattern checking to find out, are there unusual patterns happening in the process? Just as we saw with that Bob Wow graphic that we had a couple of videos ago, we could see some areas that are performing exceptionally well and some that are performing exceptionally poorly. So we can get some understanding of what was happening in the time series. So this is the first view that we have. The second view is called a process capability study. And here what we're going to do is we will take a look at the summarization, this is the enumerative view of the data, compared to the lower and upper specification limits for the customer's requirement for that process performance. And we can see if there's a ratio of one to one, what that means is six standard deviations of the variance fit exactly within the customer specification. And that is what we would call a, 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 a CP of one, excuse me. That is equal to three standard deviations or th a three sigma process, okay? If the ratio is two to one, that's a two sigma process. That's a six sigma process. And what that means is the variation would fit in the specification two times. If we have that for CP, that's talking about the design capability. But CPK is a statistic that tells us about the achieved capability. CPK is very important because that's the same as our average process performance. It's also the basis for calculating average costs or standard costs in a process. So we can use this number as a way of baselining our process on other statistics that are used in our performance uh, as reported to management, like standard costing. The third chart is called the Pareto chart, and it was named by Dr. Duran. And what the chart is actually doing is it's telling us the frequency of occurrence of independent failure events or independent events in the process. And so if we can identify different conditions that were going wrong in the process, like defect types, we can then grant, uh, rank them, if you will, in terms of the frequency of occurrence. So we'll have a bar chart with the rankings of those, and it's going to be ordered then from the most frequently occurring to the least frequently occurring. So this chart can also be developed for cost of failures or for other statistics rather than just the frequency of occurrence. 
Finally, the last chart is called uh, an analysis of variance, or more specifically, a one-way analysis of variance. And here we take one performance measure, like cycle time, and we take a look at the end-to-end -end process by the steps in which it's progressing. And we calculate how much step or how, how much time was taken every time you went through each of the steps in the process. So for each step in the process, we would have a cumulative distribution of the time it took. And so we could see, as you go through the process, the variation of the cycle time. And this will allow us to identify where is there a bottleneck in the process? Where is the process in general operating more efficiently than in other places? And this can help us to drill into the process to see where the inefficiencies are, and that gives us a ne next step for where we would like to take our next individual's chart. So as we see, by moving these together, we can focus on how to make systemic improvements happen across this whole process. So step by step, we will drill in one step at a time in the process to understand what's going on. Now, at Motorola, they combined these charts into what was called a four-up chart. And so in one view, we can see one panel of the chart with the individual's performance, one with the process capability, one with the Pareto chart, and another one with this um, uh, ANOVA view of the process and the cumulative effect. As Ronald Coe said, torture the data and it will confess. And as we start looking at this, the data is going to start telling us a story. And that's the whole purpose in the exploratory data analysis, to get this problem to drill down finer and finer levels of detail till we get to the point where we're actually at that level where we believe we're starting to see the things that could be driving the problems we have. So let's come back and we'll take a look at the final version, see how these situations can be graphically represented, and then how can we actually use this to identify the waste that's in that process?